Hi guys, Steve Good here with the Scroll Saw Workshop. Uh, going to put together a little slideshow tonight of the unboxing and assembly of the new scroll saw uh, that I just purchased from uh, Seiko.com, and that is the Excalibur EX21. And I want to thank Ray over at Seiko, who's the owner of the company, uh, for doing such a good job of getting this uh, saw shipped to me in such a timely manner. Uh, when I first ordered it, it was on back order, and uh, he did a great job of uh, getting it to me when I needed it. So here's uh, how the boxes were delivered. I ordered the uh, the saw and the stand assembly also. So the stand comes in a separate box and as you can see the uh, box arrived without any damage uh, looking really good so I was happy about that. Uh, I have heard several people mention that they weren't thrilled about the uh, assembly instructions of the stand so I thought I would go ahead and uh, show a slideshow of how I assembled the stand and hopefully that will help uh, some of you if you order one. And I think this is the problem uh, with the that people have with the stand is there basically are no assembly instructions, just this diagram. Uh, so I'm going to refer back to this diagram to show you the sequence that I went through to put it together. Uh, so here, of course, is the leg assemblies. These are the extenders. I'll call these the side cross members and these the front and back cross members. And these will be the top and these will be the bottom. So let's move on. These are the four legs and you can see I have added the extenders to the leg and bolted them on just finger tight. You want to put these extenders on the end of the legs where this set of holes is closest to. So this set of clothes, uh, holes where the cross members go, the bottom cross members are closest to the bottom of the saw where the extenders go or the bottom of the stand. These are all the cross members. The shorter cross members are for the top the longer cross members are for the bottom and again on the bottom you'll see that there's two short and two long and on the top there's two short and two long the longs are the sides of the stand and the short ones are the front and back uh, I decided to do it in the uh, order where I would assemble the front then assemble the back and then add the cross members so here's the front part of the stand assembled uh, one tip is do not tighten any of these bolts as you're doing the assembly tighten everything at the very end it makes assembly much much easier so there's the front done here I've completed the back so I have the two front and back or I have the front and back ready to go with the front laying down on my workbench, I added the side cross members for the top, the side cross members for the bottom, and again left everything loose. I took the back, laid it up on top of the cross members, added all the bolts, finger tightened everything down. I then set the uh, stand down on the floor, and at that point I decided it was level enough and everything fit well, so I was going to tighten it down and I did use my ratchet and a socket to uh, get everything good and snug. Do make sure that you do not miss any bolts when you start tightening these down. Uh, if you leave anything loose you're just going to add to the vibration of the saw. So get everything good and tight. Uh, there it is completed ready to mount the uh, saw on top of the stand. Back over to the box that contained the saw when I first opened it I had this caution diagram that showed uh, the correct lifting procedure. You want to lift from the front of the table and underneath the motor and never try to lift it from the upper handle. These are the accessories I ordered with the saw. Uh, I got the foot switch and I got the uh, magnifier work lamp and I'll talk about those a little more later. Here is the inside of the box. Again the, the Excalibur saw was uh, packaged extremely well. I uh, was very happy with the packaging. Here I have lifted the saw out of the box and temporarily set it up on top of the stand. You can see that the saw came mounted on a piece of board uh, and it was bolted down so the first thing I had to do was uh, remove these bolts and get it off the board. This is a, uh, an absolutely fantastic packaging for this saw. This board was basically like uh, shipping it with a pallet uh, which keeps everything nice and safe. So great job from uh, the people that build this saw and their packaging. You do notice that I got a lot of the uh, styrofoam all over the saw and I used an air compressor to blow that all off. Inside the box with the uh, saw came the uh, operator's manual, the power cord, an allen wrench, some blades, 
and these are the leveling feet and the leveling feet come in the box with the uh, saw and not the stand and I assume that's because if you don't buy the stand you can use the leveling feet on the bottom of the uh, saw itself. Next step was to add the leveling feet to the bottom of the stand and here is the Excalibur uh, ready to be bolted down to the stand. Uh, you can see I've got everything lined up here. All I had to do was uh, drop the bolts and washers down through here and uh, tighten the nuts down. Uh, up to this point, assembly, packaging, everything was flawless and perfect. Here is the uh, hold down that comes with the Excalibur saw. I don't recommend you take it off, but at the same time, I never use a hold down. So the first thing I always do with any new saw is to remove the hold down, and that's what I've done here. The Excalibur comes with a unique feature where the uh, upper arm is actually what uh, uh, tilts to do an angle cut and not the table like most saws. Uh, so the first thing I thought I would do is go ahead and adjust the, uh, uh, the arm to the table. And you can see here I've used my protractor to set that. I went ahead and attached the foot switch. Now what I'm getting ready to do is add the magnifier lamp and it has you remove this little screw right here with your Allen wrench. Uh, take that out. Now here's the first problem uh, with the entire assembly of the saw. This little bracket is what holds the magnifier lamp and the hole that you have to put back uh, the screw back in that you took out through this bracket was not big enough for this uh, for this screw so I actually had to drill this hole out a little bigger to get it to fit. I don't know if that's uh, a problem that's going to come with uh, every every lamp but I did have that problem no big deal it took me a couple minutes to fix it. I've attached the gooseneck of the magnifier lamp to the bracket with the, the included thumb screw and here you can see the gooseneck and the lamp. Uh, one thing I did notice is when I turned the saw on and had it running at high speed this cover that sits over the top of the magnifier, uh, the magnifying glass, vibrated a lot. When you open it up, the vibration goes away. So uh, I'll have to do a little closer look at this little cover right here to see if uh, it can latch down or whatever. But that was very annoying. So I can imagine I'll always have that open if it's going to do that. So at the, uh, up to this point, other than the one little minor point problem with the bracket, again, wonderful packaging. Uh, wonderful quality of the stand. It actually was very easy to put together uh, just by following the one little diagram uh, and I was really pleased. Uh, again this is the Excalibur EX21. Uh, fantastic saw uh, in my opinion up to uh, the limited use I've had with it at, uh, at uh, different stores and um, at a uh, couple of the scroll saw shows I've been to. So I think I'm going to be real pleased with this saw, but uh, tomorrow night I'll have some more time to sit down and uh, actually use the saw, and we'll come back with another video to uh, show that. So I'm Steve Good. I hope this unboxing of the Excalibur EX21 is helpful to you, and we'll see you tomorrow night here at the scroll saw workshop.